Hello friends, in this video we will talk about HTTP polling, HTTP long polling and WebSocket. These are basically three different techniques for client-server communication. In a client-server architecture, a client first sends a request to the server, then server does some processing and if it has some data for the client, then it sends the data as a response to the client. And finally, that HTTP connection is closed. So this is kind of the story for a client-server communication. And for this, we can follow three different techniques or mechanism. Let's first talk about HTTP polling. What happens in HTTP polling? Say, for example, we have a client and a server, right? In the very beginning, client sends a request to server asking hey do you have any data for me if the server has data for that specific client it sends back the data if it does not have any data then it sends kind of empty response and the connection is closed after some time again the client asks the server hey do you have any data for me if the server has data for the client, it sends the data or it sends empty response. And same thing keeps happening. Maybe this time the server has data for client and sends the data back to the client, okay? So in HTTP polling, client basically sends regular HTTP requests at a fixed interval to the server. So what happens here? Server basically responds to each request almost immediately with or without data. If the server has any data for the client, it sends them as response. If the server does not have any data, it just returns immediately. No, I don't have any data for you. What happens here? As a result, the client actually keeps calling the server and we make a lot of unnecessary network traffic, right? And what is the good side here? The good side is it's easy to implement. Basically, these are simple uh, HTTP request implementation. Now, let's take a look into HTTP long polling. In HTTP long polling, client sends regular HTTP request just like HTTP polling, right? But the difference is server holds the request open until new data arrives or timeout occurs. So here actually server does not send an immediate empty response. Rather server actually waits for data to arrive. As soon as data arrives for that specific client, server returns the response. So you still need to open new connections for each request. This is kind of the difference between HTTP polling and long polling. Let's try to understand the thing with animation. The first thing is like client is sending a request to server rather than immediately returning an response when we don't have any data, server actually keeps waiting. So for example, it's waiting for one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, and finally some data arrived for that specific client and server sends the response back to client and that connection is closed. Again, client requests a new data by opening a new connection. And this time also server keeps opening. Say for example, it op waits for like two seconds or two minutes, whatever. Then finally, when it gets some data for that specific client, it sends the data back to that customer and that connection is closed. So the main difference from HTTP polling and HTTP long polling is that server keeps waiting a little bit longer until it receives a new data for the client or it time out. Where can we use this? So this setup is good where we need near real-time data. It's not exactly real-time, but close to real-time. 
as soon as data arrives, we send back to customer or client. And another thing is, it reduces the number of requests sent by client. Earlier, what was happening? The client was sending requests over and over, no matter whether it's receiving data or not. But this time, every time client is sending a request, it's basically getting some data, right? Until in an exceptional case where it times out. Now, finally, let's take a look into WebSocket. WebSocket is kind of the improved version of HTTP long polling. What happens here? We have the same client server architecture. Client initiates the connection. And after the handshaking, uh, connection bridges actually opened in between client and server. And it's a bidirectional persistent connection. It's like a channel in between client and server, or we can call a highway where data can like travel both ways. And if any of the client or server explicitly closes the channel, the connections terminated. This is a bidirectional full duplex communication. It's a persistent connection that remains open for the communication session unless closed explicitly. Where can we use this? We can use in systems basically where we need real-time data like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, trading platform, real-time gaming dashboard, something like this. So the actual thing is, as soon as some data arrives here, the connection is always open in between client and server, and it sends back the response to customer, something like this, right? So the connection actually never gets closed unless explicitly someone closes it. And whenever any data arrives to server, it just sends that back to client. And this way, basically, we reduce the number of requests which were being sent from client to server earlier to one. Client just sends exactly one connection request to the server and a connection bridge is established in between client and server and data just keep following both of So we understood the benefits here, right? The client opens exactly one connection calling to the server and a network bridge or a channel or a highway is established in between client and server Whenever server receives any data, it sends back to the specific client. And we don't need to create too many unnecessary network traffic. And it also helps to improve the latency and performance. So that's the benefit of WebSocket. But another thing is like, it's complex to implement, right? The HTTP polling, or long polling, a little bit easier to implement. Whereas in OAP socket, we need to think about the state of all connections or client and the implementation gets a little bit complex. So that's the kind of summary of these three different techniques.